welcome back to my channel um today is camera agency here an episode and today i actually have a special guest can you please introduce yourself to our viewers of course uh hi i'm kelvin and uh, i'm glad to be a part of this uh year-end show today and uh, to tell you a little bit more about myself uh, i started photography around 2008 with an inherited camera from my uncle and from there it snowballed into what I am today uh, a film enthusiast and a, and a film camera collector uh, my favorite camera uh, is actually a Leica M2 uh, I like the way it shoots, I like the way it handles, I like everything about it and I like that it's a bare bones camera but uh, I'll tell you more about it uh, later. Um, also, uh, as for my, you could say, uh, photography highlight of, the, of this year, uh, actually, let me tell you more uh, about what I like to shoot. I like to shoot about, uh, I like to shoot street scenes, urban landscapes. Uh, so, I mean, I, I guess you could call me a street photographer, except I don't call myself a photographer. <laughs> Anyway, um, so yeah, I like to shoot street and uh, my photography highlight of the year was uh, when I was lucky enough to be included in the Toronto Urban Photography Festival for this year and uh, if you'd like to know more about it, uh, check the links in the description box below. Yeah, below. Okay, <laughs> so how about you, Angela? What's your favorite uh, highlight of the year? Uh, I think it probably would be my trip to Japan because I've seen a lot of cameras that I've never seen before. So I thought that was kind of awesome. Plus, I took a lot of pictures since um, traveling to Asia, which I haven't been to in a while. So I thought that was kind of exciting. So. Anyway, so um, we're gonna move on to this episode. Um, I'll pass it on to Kelvin because he's gonna talk about some of the topics that we are planning to cover for this year's episode. So please check it out. Hi. So uh, since this is a year-end photography review, uh, we will start with the most used camera of the year. Well, for me, it's actually two most used cameras. Uh, it's split between the Leica M2, which is my favorite camera, as I've said uh, at the beginning of the show, and also a Olympus OM-D M5. Now, uh, regarding the Leica, uh, as I've said, um, once I picked it up, I never really stopped using it. Uh, I like it because it's compact, it's responsive, and uh, it's really your plain bare bones camera uh, but still wondering why it was so expensive it was a bare bones camera but um, it's it's just a camera you look into it you take a photo and the special thing about it for me is that when you're shooting it becomes a part of your body like you never notice the camera when you notice a, a, a when you notice a photo forming you can just raise it up to your eye click that's it. Comes a part of your body. Uh, the second one is the Olympus OMD M5, which I actually have right here. Now this camera, um, I've owned it for about a year now, and uh, right now I've been shooting with the uh, Olympus 17 uh, millimeter 1.8. So that translates to about 34, 35 millimeter equivalent in a. Uh, in uh, full frame terms so this camera I like it because uh, again like the M2 it's small compact responsive and uh, I like I like the fact that this 17 millimeter 1.8 is one of the few uh, micro four third lenses that has this uh, scale focusing capability in here so you can push pull the focus ring and it switches to autofocus and manual focus so I find that really neat because with the Leica M2 and uh, with this camera too I do a lot of zone focusing because I find honestly that 
autofocus is not even blazing fast autofocus it's useless for me if it won't focus on the stuff that I like and I tend to favor tend to favor really wide depth of field meaning that everything is in focus I really like those uh, I really like those that style so that's why I prefer scale focusing anyway uh, yeah most used camera uh, Olympus OMD EM5 and the Leica M2 and next uh, I'd like to talk about the uh, photo, bo photo books that I've uh, purchased recently uh, this is my most recent purchase which is the RE Photo Selection Volume 4 this is done by Shinya Arimoto She's, he's a Japanese photographer and uh, I really like his works because um, his work, I, I would say that it's not as gritty as, uh, let's say, Daido Moriyama or other street photographers of the same, the same style. Uh, so you would see, his photos are kind of clean. Uh, he shoots with a, I think uh, it's a... Um, Hasselblad uh, medium format camera. Now, as you can see, these photos, uh, I can say that compared to uh, European photographers, European European street photographers, it's not as well composed. It doesn't look like the the painting sometimes, or or the the well composed lines with a with a single single subjects that you would usually seen European street photography uh, it's yeah it's not as well composed but what I like about this uh, photographer is that his uh, photos are always overflowing with emotion if you can say that um, I feel that the way the way he shoots is that when, when he sees something he likes he sets it up he sets up the shot very quickly and he takes a photo and then uh, I guess he just uh, sorts through the the, ne through the negatives when he's done because I've seen a few contact contact prints of his negatives but uh, yeah he's a really good photographer I really like his work uh, this one I think this is my, my most favorite shot of this book uh, so it's an older guy and as you can see he's not a like me he's not a fan of the narrow depth of field as you can see it's still in focus so he doesn't he doesn't need to uh, I guess exploit the narrow depth of field that medium format offers in order to isolate his subjects so yeah that's why I really like it continuing to where Kelvin left off um, for the 2013 for the year 2013 I actually found myself using Two cameras mostly um, and one is film and one is digital um, the first one would be my Fuji X10 um, I got it a year almost a year and a half ago I believe and this is kind of like my uh, my hobby camera when I'm not using my DSLR and it proved to be very useful to me especially especially when I went on holidays overseas this year and I find that it's easier to bring um, if you're away without lugging too much of a gear but you still want to take really good quality pictures technically um, another camera that I've been using more often is my trusty old Fujifilm Instax 7 and I've seen um, a boost in popularity for the Instax Mini 8 here in North America, which is actually really interesting. Like, probably five and a half years ago, um, I was the only one that I know in my circle that has been using um, Fuji Instax, and everyone was like, oh, like, it's a Polaroid. Um, but now that um, it's been widely available actually even staples actually carry them I have a couple of friends that actually own these themselves and and I think the reason why I, why I have found myself using this more is because of 
um, my lifestyle this year as I found that I've been really busy so the only time that I could take pictures aside when I take commissions is that when I go out with friends and usually um, if I don't bring this or use my cell phone um, I just take these around and I actually use this more than the Instax um, Instax wide so yeah I've, I've used two cameras and I'm actually looking forward to using my F100 more next year. Um, that's the camera that I got um, from Tokyo this summer. So I'm actually really looking forward to using it. And finally, um, it's my turn to um, discuss like my most recently purchased photo books. Um, I actually planned to shoot just an episode about one of these. But um, I ended up getting really busy and then thought that maybe I'll just make a year-end video. So hence, that episode got scraped off and I ended up featuring it um, as a portion in this episode. Um, so I actually recently got two books. Um, I got Annie Leibovitz's um, Pilgrimage. Um, this is actually um, a book about a lot of places that Leibovitz decided to visit um, and she just decided to just take pictures but if you're gonna take a look at this book and the pictures in it um, it's probably something that you're not expecting and um, at first you may not be I guess in awe or impressed of the photos here but what I like about this book so far I'm just halfway through it um, is that it's accompanied by stories and I think that's what makes these pictures more um, powerful. Like if you just look at it, you'll probably think that it doesn't really stand out. But um, once you get through um, the stories behind them and why or why they were taken, um, you're, you'll find yourself being drawn into it. So I actually like this book and I got this at a really discount price and it's it's a new copy so I'm looking forward to finishing it and plus I love the cover um, I'm not really sure if this is the Canadian side of the Niagara Falls but um, I'm not sure but so that's one of the books and the reason why I just and the other one actually I just got it last week um, when Kelvin and I were um, checking uh, one of a state one new stationery store in the city it's called stuck in the middle by Brian Scott and Bartley K Kives I'm sorry if I butcher your last name um, this coffee table book is actually about um, Winnipeg which is a city here in Canada and if you don't if you don't know yet um, Winnipeg is actually right smack in the middle of North America so um, so that's why they call it like the heart of North America or something within that lines. But this book is actually about, um, Winnipeg and there's actually a lot of like really good photos in here and they're also accompanied by, by text. So as you can see, like there's some sort of a pattern here and I haven't gone through the, the whole book yet. I mean, I skimmed through the photos just to see what it looks like, but as a first impression so far um i actually felt really weirded out or different i guess because the feeling of seeing these establishments in person as opposed to like seeing them seeing their photos on print like it kind of ev kind of evokes a different feeling so I'm not sure what it is yet but I guess once I start going through this book um, I'll probably be able to pinpoint what's what's up with that so I'm really excited to see this um, I'll link Brian Scott's Flickr page in the info box below because I've seen some of his works prior to buying this book that's why when I saw it I'm like oh I need to get it so anyway so that wraps up this episode I hope you enjoy um, this year's show and I'm actually hoping to make more episodes and hope to see you guys all next year bye now bye bye, bye. <laughs>